I am Revan, and I will complete the work I started so long ago. Hey there, guys. This is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. Star Wars is brimming with characters whose names are so well known that most people turn their heads when they hear them. The Star Wars series lives on owing to its heroes and villains, whether it's Luke Skywalker, another Jedi Master, or maybe even one of the greatest villains ever written, the Sith Lord Darth Vader. But not all of the strongest Star Wars characters originate from the Skywalker saga or even series developer George Lucas. In fact, one of the most revered villains in many fans' hearts, Darth Revan from BioWare Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, is debasably canon in the new Disney phase. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is set in the Old Republic era, when both the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire were in power. With all three games set over 3,000 years before even the Skywalker story, Disney is seeking to tackle the Old Republic in the upcoming Star Wars film saga, and an antagonist like Darth Revan is a character who sorely needs to be explored and used to his highest capacity in the next saga. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I am Revan! Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was the role-playing game that first introduced this character. Revan, dubbed the Revan Chist, the Revan, the Butcher, the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Revan, and the Prodigal Knight, was a human male who was of great importance as both a Sith and a Jedi in the Jedi Civil War and the Mandalorian Wars. The man, subsequently known as Revan, was born in the year 3994 BBY in the Outer Rim Territories and trained as a Padawan of the Jedi Order under a plethora of various Jedi Masters. The young man became a Jedi Knight after becoming good friends with a fellow student called Alec, and he was an outspoken and charismatic critic of the Order's passivity in the raging Mandalorian Wars between the Mandalorian Warrior clans and the Galactic Republic. Heading the revanchist movement against the orders of the Jedi Council, the knight wore the garb of a fallen Mandalorian as he entered the Republic military struggle and was named Supreme Commander. However, after the Battle of Malachor V in 3960 BBY, where he defeated Mandalore the Ultimate, a Mandalorian commander, Revan and his companion Alec, now known as Malak, pursued the trail of a mysterious Sith involvement in the Mandalorian Wars to the Unknown Regions, where they unearthed the reconstructed Sith Empire and were swayed to the darkness of the Force by the Sith Emperor. Darth Malak and Darth Revan, freshly proclaimed Dark Lords of the Sith, were sent out to the Republic as special agents and broke away from the Emperor's cognitive control and formed their own kingdom using the Star Forge, an old space station of enormous power built by the Rakata race. Revan and Malak fought hard against the Republic in the ensuing Jedi Civil War and used the Star Forge to create an armed fleet and equipment. Revan, unfortunately, was betrayed by his Sith protege Malak and kidnapped by Bastille. Dilashan, the Jedi Knight who rescued Revan and made a force link with her hostage. The Jedi Council gave Revan a fresh start as a Republic fighter and stationed him on board the Republic cruiser Endar Spire after wiping his consciousness. Later, when Malik stormed the Spire over the planet Taris in an unsuccessful attempt to grab Shan, Revan joined forces with Karth Onasi, a Republic officer as well as a handful of other Taris residents to locate Shan and flee the planet before Malik wrecked the planet's surface. Revan and his comrades headed to the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine, where he was trained again as a Jedi Padawan. While on a journey in search of the star maps, Rakatan treasures that would lead to the Star Forge, Revan made new friends and got close to Shan. When the party was seized by Malak, Revan's actual identity was exposed and Shan was kidnapped, leaving Revan and his team to uncover the last map and reach the Star Forge entirely on their own. Revan earned the rank of Prodigal Knight and the Cross of Glory after bringing a fallen Shan back to the side of the good of the Force with his passion aboard the Star Forge and defeating Malik. Revan married Shan and faded into the background for several years before his returning memories drove him to abandon his wife and newborn child in quest of truths in the unknown regions. Caught by the Sith, he was jailed for three years until he was liberated by a former lieutenant called Mitra Surik with the assistance of Scourge, a Sith Lord. Taking full command of the Rakatan Foundry, Revan sought to construct a fleet of extermination bots to crush the Empire, but the Jedi Master was beaten by an Imperial strike team and was slain as a result. The trio's effort to kill the Sith Emperor ended in failure, and Revan was imprisoned by the Emperor for 300 years before being rescued by Republic troops. However, the Emperor's torture had split Revan's consciousness, 
and although part of him tried to become connected with the Force, the remainder rejected dying and held on to life, joining the Dark Side. Taking command of the fanatical Order of Revan, he wanted to eliminate the Sith Emperor once and for all by resurrecting the Sith Ruler and murdering him. But both the Republic and the Empire banded together to stop him. While the Emperor had managed to restore his power, Revan's good side was unable to move on and assisted the Coalition in destroying the evil Revan. Revan's consciousness went on to help the Champions of the Galaxy in finally killing the Sith Emperor, and once that duty was fulfilled, he became unified with the Force. His legacy, even so, would continue living on. The Sith Lord, Darth Revan, chose his Sith identity after reading a destroyed manuscript about Revan during the Thousand Year Battle known as the New Sith Wars. And Darth Bane, another Sith Lord, found Revan's Sith Holocron on the world of Lihon and used Revan's doctrines to establish the rule of two philosophy. I've been reborn. My mind is clearer. My power intensified. And now, with the order under my command, I'm unstoppable. You're telling me the Revanite... How his character was built for the video game. Revan was initially presented in the 2003 computer game Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic by Bioware. Revan's physical appearance and gender are configurable as the player character, and the game indicates that the player-chosen moniker is part of the cover persona established by the Jedi Council. Other than occasional instances of employing the security skill, none of the player's conversation contains voiceovers. However, the masculine player character's screams of anguish and yells during fighting are voiced. The new Essential Chronology and the Chronicles of the Old Republic established Revan's canonical gender as male. In the 2004 computer game, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, however, the player can choose Revan's gender and allegiance. It wasn't until late in the game's development that the creators recognized that they required a scenario exposing Darth Revan's actual identity as the player of the game. Hence, they requested the team's primary character designer, Mike Spaulding, to build the character model. When Spaulding asked for the vision, the group noted they still needed to create one, so Spaulding drew it on a scrap of paper beside his keypad and used it to build the character. The original artwork, as well as a multitude of concept artistic pieces for several of BioWare's older video games, have now been lost owing to the firm's concept artist's practice of creating their concepts on easily destroyed paper. Revan was voiced by Jeff Bennett in the 2011 BioWare computer game Star Wars The Old Republic. He is also the protagonist of Drew Kopishin's The Old Republic, Revan, a tie-in book to The Old Republic that tells what became of Revan and the exile after the occurrences of the two games. While developing Revan's core backstory, BioWare's game makers understood they needed a solid adversary. Hence, they created Darth Malik to justify how and why Revan squandered his memories and powers. With the launch of the Old Republic, Lucasfilm Limited employee Leland Chi revealed during Celebration 6 that Revan's canonical look in Knights of the Old Republic as the man modeled with a mullet hairdo was defined. Revan is the subject of four interrelated flashpoints, or team raids, that culminate with Revan's disappearance in a burst of violet light. Revan's survival was ultimately established in the Old Republic's game update 2.9's Legacy of the Rakata flashpoint, and he appears as the principal villain of the digital expansion Shadow of Revan, where he acts as the last boss of the Yavin plotline as well as the Temple of Sacrifice operation. Because Knights of the Old Republic is indeed an RPG with a high degree of player choice, there are several potential narratives and endings possible. This empire failed because of you. Someone like me could lead it to victory. Do not waste time following the path of Ma and Malgus. Early life and training with his many Jedi Masters. In roughly 3994 BBY, a human male named Revan was born, and some speculated that he was birthed in the Outer Rim territories. The boy known as Revan was later determined to be Force-sensitive and recruited into the Jedi Order. Kreia, the Jedi Master, claimed to be his first trainer in the Mysteries of the Force. Regardless of the validity of her claim, the human was mentored in both the world of Coruscant and in the Jedi Enclave in the world of Dantooine, along with another young student called Alec. Both humans underwent additional training from Tsar Lestin, a Twi'lek Jedi Master. He remarked that the man, subsequently known as Revan, had a ravenous thirst for knowledge. 
Lestin saw it as youthful excitement and zeal, and he believed that the young man would emerge as a champion of the order, a notion echoed by Master Van der Toke, although Master Vruk Lamar was skeptical of his student's thirst for information. After departing the tutelage of his initial instructor, the Jedi trained under a variety of Jedi Masters, including Master Lestin, the Enclave's historian Master Dorak, and also Master Aaron K. Michael, a former Jedi aspirant, subsequently stated that the Jedi eventually recognized as Revan had studied Force ties and other rare Force skills as a Padawan. Along with Alec, he attained the status of Jedi Knight before the 3964 BBY, and the pair were widely regarded as two of the Jedi Order's most promising members. However, Alec's companion was widely regarded as the stronger and cleverer of the two, and he was considered to be the pair's leader. By 3964 BBY, the boy had established himself as a well-known, charming, and strong Jedi Knight. As per Michael, the Jedi went to his first master to find the best way to quit the Jedi Order, but he ended up not following through with that notion. This empire failed because of you. Someone like me could lead it to victory. Do not. Canonical conflicts within the video game. Because Knights of the Old Republic is an interactive game, Revan's canonical history frequently clashes with the player's choices, such as the sequence in which the star maps are discovered, whether the player pursues a relationship, or their looks and weaponry. Revan's lightsaber of choice varies depending on the source. In the Knights of the Old Republic comic book series, Revan brandishes a purple lightsaber, whereas the Galactic Timeline video shows Revan wielding a blue lightsaber in the Mandalorian Wars, a typical red lightsaber as a Sith Lord, and a blue lightsaber once more as a redeemed Jedi. Revan uses a green lightsaber in the Old Republic, but a violet-colored blade in the Old Republic. According to the Galactic Timeline series, Revan is of the same stature as compared to Malik, or a little taller, which contradicts all other sources. Revan's descent into the darkness has been a matter of controversy among many accounts. The Enclave Council in Bastilla Shan allege in Knights of the Old Republic that Revan and Malik began their descent when they started studying the ruins on Dantooine, while Vruk Lamar thinks the two fell before the Mandalorian Wars. According to the Chronicles of the Old Republic, Revan was influenced strongly by the darkness in the Mandalorian Wars and began his preparations to become a Sith, even then. However, the Chronicles are riddled with narrative issues and have been generally overruled by newer sources. The reference text, Jedi vs. Sith, The Essential Guide to the Force, published in 2007, indicated that Revan had become Dark Lord of the Sith sometime around 3961 BBY. However, the Knights of the Old Republic campaign guide asserted that Revan acquired the title of Dark Lord in 3960 BBY after locating the Star Forge. The novel The Old Republic and the Old Republic Revan state that Revan and Malik were poisoned by the Sith Emperor and then sent back as advance agents. Revan himself admits in the Old Republic that he was closer to the dark side in the Mandalorian Wars, having toured Koriban and Malakor. And the Old Republic, Revan, confirms that the two were looking for the Star Forge on the Emperor's behest, but broke free and headed off on their own. However, Revan states in the Old Republic that the Emperor reached out to the two Jedi and called them to his empire, which contradicts all other accounts. Another controversy regarding Revan has been determining if the character's true name is Revan. According to Star Wars writer Abel G. Pena, Revan and Malik retain their true identities, making them the very first Sith to adopt the Darth rank without assuming a Sith nickname. On the other hand, Jedi vs. Sith documented that the persona of Alec Squinquagesimus, who is present in the Knights of the Old Republic book series, was, in reality, Darth Malik, and the guide also linked the figure of the Revanchist with Revan. The writer of the Knights of the Old Republic comic books, John Jackson Miller, implied that Revan had not been the character's true name, and the 42nd issue stated that he picked up the name of Revan and wore his distinctive mask on Cathar in 3963 BBY. Revan personally settles the matter once and for all in the Old Republic, admitting that Revan wasn't really his true name. Bastila says in Knights of the Old Republic that the explosions on board Revan's flagship caused his memory loss, while all other sources, including other characters from the game, believe that Revan's mind was wiped by the Council. Malik is also mentioned in the game's opening as Revan's final surviving apprentice, despite the fact that all later sources say that Malik was actually Revan's lone apprentice. The canonical plotline of Knights of the Old Republic was initially unknown due to the game's flexible nature. The new essential chronology, which confirmed Revan's gender, also confirmed that the game's light side finale and the demolition of the Star Forge were canons. Other sources, like the comic Shadows and Light, the complete Star Wars Encyclopedia, 
Galactic Timeline and Star Wars The Old Republic have also determined elements of the game to be canon. Can't you see you're on the wrong side? The Emperor is death. For you, for me, for the galaxy. Some major comic book story arcs featuring Darth Revan, The Mandalorian Wars. Warriors from the Mandalorian Society launched an assault on the Galactic Republic's territory in the Outer Rim, launching the Mandalorian Wars to the more giant galaxy. Outraged by the Jedi Council's failure to join the Order in the battle, the young Jedi Knights started to talk to many other Order members, suggesting that the Jedi must actively assist the Republic military in its struggle to fight off the Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders. As the number of civilian and military deaths continued to grow, the Republic media labeled Revan as the Jedi's own crusader. And this crusader steadily acquired a following of like-minded Jedi. Alec was the very first to support the movement, and his companion swiftly became known as the master of others who followed him. The Jedi Knight, with the support of Alec and the rest of his followers, chose to travel to the front lines against the will of the Jedi High Council in order to scout the enemy lines. On the journey, he and his entourage stopped on Taris in the Ojosta sector to confer with Lucian Dre, a Jedi Master. The Crusader wanted to recruit additional Jedi from Taris's Jedi Tower, but neither Dre nor the rest of the Jedi there were ready to help. The Knight left Alec and the bulk of his supporters on the planet Sergia not long after leaving Taris, while he investigated Mandalorian activities on Onderon and its moon Zun. Many of his followers, however, were kidnapped by Mandalorians in an assault in Sergia. The Knight presented his findings to the Jedi Council in Coruscant soon after the Republic formally entered the Mandalorian Wars. However, the Council yet again warned him that the Order would have no role to play in the battle. In answer, the Council tasked the Human Knight with rescuing the Jedi who had been kidnapped. The Knight ran into Master Dre as he was leaving the Council rooms on Coruscant, and following a brief discussion about their respective perspectives on the conflict, he went to finish his task. The Jedi supporters, including Alec, were finally released from the Mandalorian researcher Demigol on the planet Flashpoint by the fleeing Zane Karik, a Jedi Padawan who was framed for the death of his Tardis classmates by his old master, Lucian Dre. The Knight resumed his quest for Jedi participation in the Mandalorian Wars after reuniting with Alec and his other supporters. As the leader of the Revanchist movement, as his faction became known, he became a celebrity in the Greater Republic, and the Republic media portrayed him as a crusading hero who was wrongly disregarded by the Jedi Council. Though he was initially referred to in news reports as the Revanchist leader, the young Jedi Knight quickly became known merely as the Revanchist. The Revanchist traveled the galaxy, spreading his word of Jedi intervention to those who would listen throughout the year 3963 BBY. One of the Revanchist supporters, a Cathar Jedi called Fero, brought the world of Cathar to the Revanchist's notice. Fero's whole race had disappeared from their homeworld ten years ago, and the Revanchist began to show other Jedi the abandoned planet in an attempt to persuade them that the Mandalorians had to be stopped. Alec and Revan were on Cathar, which is when Mandalorian troops led by Mandalore the Ultimate launched an attack on the planet Sirocco. The Mandalorians attacked the surface of the planet with nuclear bombs during the Battle of Sirocco, and the Revanchist sensed the death of countless innocents from many sectors away. Not long later, Lord Arko Adaska, the head of Arcania's Adaska Biomechanical Corporation, allowed the Revanchist to bid on armed exogorths that the industrialist hoped to sell to any group in the Mandalorian Wars. Due to essential business abroad, the Knight was not able to visit the auction, causing him to send Alec in his stead. Several Jedi saw Adaska's exogorths as having the potential to influence the trajectory of the battle. Thus, the Revanchist directed his comrade to guarantee that the risk the weapons presented was eradicated. The Revanchist was said to be planning a meeting with numerous Jedi opinion makers in the wake of the Adaska incident. Lucian Dre was promoted to the Jedi Council shortly following the Adaska incident. He informed the Council that Republic intelligence documents showed that the Mandalorians' annexation plans had been thwarted, allegedly by an insurgency within their own ranks, and that the interventionist route advocated by the Revanchist was inappropriate for both the Republic and the Jedi. The Council supported his proposal, which ordered the Revanchists to be recalled or detained if necessary. After Alec, now posing as Captain Malak, testified before the Jedi Council against a hidden group known as the Jedi Covenant, the Council sent him away to the Revanchist and his supporters with the last warning. When Malak arrived from Coruscant, the Revanchist was back on Cathar, but many Jedi Masters, including Master Lamar, tracked him there. 
The Masters addressed the Revan Chist and his supporters, reminding the youthful Jedi that the Mandalorians were far from exceptional and demanding the disbandment of the Revan Chist movement. During the conversation, though, the Revan Chist uncovered a Mandalorian helmet underfoot. When he brought it up, the entire Jedi troop was engulfed in a Force vision from the past. Hundreds of Cathar were surging toward the adjacent shore, followed by a swarm of Mandalorians headed by Cassus Fett, Mandalore's lieutenant. The Jedi attempted to protect the Cathar, but their sabers were powerless against the Phantom Mandalorians. The Jedi stood powerless as the Cathar were pushed into the sea while Fett's soldiers prepared to slaughter them. However, one Mandalorian flew into the path of the Cathar and appealed to Fett on their account, claiming that the Cathar had been vanquished and that slaughter was pointless. Fett announced that the Cathar must be obliterated for disrespecting the Mandalorians in the Great Sith War, and that if the fighter wanted to remain with the Cathar during their dying moments, she must perish with them. Fett thanked her for her efforts before instructing his warships to fire, murdering the Lady Mandalorian and every single one of the Cathar. The Revanchist had discovered that woman's mask, and moved by her bravery, he put the visor on his face. He pledged to keep the mask on until all Mandalorians were taken into account for their misdeeds, drawing his violet-bladed saber and assuming the simple name of Revan. The information obtained behind the Cathar genocide had an impact on the Jedi Council as well. While they were still reluctant to lead the entirety of the Jedi Order into battle, the Mandalorians' atrocities were sufficient to convince the Council to reluctantly authorize Revan and his faction's involvement at the behest of the Republic. Officially, they continued to condemn Revan's acts as rash and hasty, and they discouraged the members of the Order from embracing Revan's cause. In actuality, the Mandalorians' own deeds rendered them incapable of opposing Revan's cause. However, Revan devised a plan that would placate the Council while also allowing him to answer to the rising public demand for the Jedi to act. Inspired by a 30-year-old project that permitted civilian healers to operate alongside the military during the Great Sith War, he advocated that the Revanchists be appointed as a mercy corps into the Republic military. The Council reluctantly approved of Revan's proposal, and the newly constituted Mercy Corps was assigned directly to him. In the weeks that followed, the Revanchist Jedi entered the Republic military in open combat against the Mandalorians. Mitra Suri, a Jedi, had emerged as one of Revan's more valued lieutenants by this point. Revan managed to win a string of significant conquests, proving himself to the Republic military as a competent commander. And in 3962 BBY, Revan and Malik stopped the Battle of Duro from turning into an even bigger tragedy by introducing a bunch of Interdictor-class cruisers into the framework and preventing the Mandalorians from fleeing with vast quantities of war material from Duro's orbital shipyards. In recognition of their achievements, Tol Kressa, the Supreme Chancellor, appointed him Supreme Commander and assigned him direct command of one-third of the Republic's military. The Republic's war effort started to push out the Mandalorians under his control, but at a cost. Revan and Malik started to follow a philosophy of victory at any cost. While Revan had a sharp military mind and understood that the Republic's manufacturing power was the key to success, many of his wins came as a consequence of him sacrificing funds and territory to obtain an edge. Moral shortcuts were prevalent under Malik and Revan's command, and the two Jedi had an unusually cold and calculating mentality. They countered the Mandalorian's harsh methods with equally vicious tactics. Revan and Malik discovered an old Rakata ruin on Dantooine near the Jedi Enclave during the following two years, and after a slew of tests at the orders of the droid guards, the two were granted admission to the inner chambers. Malik cautioned Revan of the repercussions moments before they stepped over the threshold, fearing that the Council might expel them if they tried to enter. Revan, however, would not be deterred, and the two entered the room to find a star map, a Rakata species relic that depicted a portion of the whereabouts of the Rakata space station called the Star Forge. Revan uncovered a second star map in the recesses of the Shadowlands, a section of the Wookiee home planet of Kashyyyk in 3961 BBY, and the two Jedi also explored the Sith world of Koriban briefly. Not long later, Revan visited the Sith planet of Malakor V and uncovered the Treus Academy, a Sith learning temple. He was captivated by the evil side of the Force there. Starting to learn from the Sith data contained inside the Academy, Malak was also brought to the dark side by Revan. Though corrupted by the darkness, Revan did not abandon the Jedi teachings at first, and Malak and he kept on fighting the Mandalorians. 
When the Republic attempted to force the Mandalorians out of Taris, Revan led a troop of Jedi into war in Taris's undercity. Revan liberated a group of slaves who were due to be auctioned on the slave market, including Juhani, a young, Force-sensitive Cathar. Inspired by Revan's bravery, Juhani was persuaded to enter the Jedi Order by one of Revan's companions. Not long after, Malak and Revan were beaten by the Mandalorian leader Cassus Fett in Jagar's cluster, a star cluster, and Revan then directed a substantial portion of his troops to invade the Mandalorian strongholds on Onderon and Zun, led by now General Mitra Surik. His combat strategy called for a slew of small unit feints to explore the Mandalorian defenses for cracks, and despite her depleted troops, Surik followed out his orders. The war on Zun lasted months and resulted in significant Republic losses with around 10 Republic soldiers who died for every Mandalorian fatality. In order to entice the Mandalorians, Revan began a war against the world of Uther III, which decimated a large portion of the Mandalorian force. By 3960 BBY, Revan had started to wield a blue lightsaber and had ordered the creation of the Mass Shadow Generator, a superweapon built by the Zabrak expert Baudur. The Mass Shadow Generator was the focal point of an intricate snare in the Malakor system, wherein he sought to bait the Mandalorians into the last showdown that would end the fight. He gave General Surik control over half of the Republic forces to act as bait to pull the Mandalorians in the Mass Shadow Generator's range. At the same time, the remainder of the fleet, led by Revan, launched an attack on Mandalore's flagship. Many of the troops and Jedi present at the combat were not ardent followers of the Supreme Commander, whether by chance or design. Some subsequently felt that Revan purposefully deployed his enemies to the fight in order to eradicate them. A Mandalorian scouting team, however, delayed Revan's exit from the system. When Mandalore landed in the Malakor system, a large naval battle was in progress, and understanding that loss was inevitable, he chose to challenge Revan to a solo duel. Answering Mandalore's challenge, Revan challenged him to a battle to the death on board Mandalore's flagship. Despite his might, Mandalore was finally defeated by his Jedi rival, and at the conclusion of the combat, Mandalore lay dead at Revan's feet. Mandalore removed his mask, coughing up blood, and proceeded to speak to his triumphant opponent about the way he had been deceived. Revan, perplexed, asked Mandalore what that meant, and the wounded man confessed that he had been duped into starting the war by a red-skinned Sith. Before convincing Mandalore to fight the Republic, the Sith convinced him to aid him in locating a Sith grave on the ice world of Rekiad, and Mandalore handed Revan Rekiad's coordinates to show that he was speaking the truth moments before he died. As a trophy of battle, Revan grabbed Mandalore's mask, his emblem of authority. With Revan's win, the Republic troops pushed the Mandalorian troops nearer to Malachor V. Shurik then ordered Baudur to start the Mass Shadow Generator. As soon as Revan's ship was out of range, the superweapon activated. Shurik and Revan both gazed in horror as the majority of the Mandalorian force and a significant number of Republic warships were dragged into a gigantic gravity vortex near the planet. Countless spacecraft were sucked out of orbit and crashed against the crust of Malachor V smashing them and breaking the world to its core. Thousands were killed on both sides of the conflict, with the Mandalorians suffering significantly more deaths than the Republic. Not bad for rescue. Through passion, I gain strength. Show me. The Second Rise of the Sith Revan instructed that the surviving Mandalorians be forcibly stripped of their armor and weapons as well as their basilisk battle droids. Revan refused to give the mask back to the Mandalorians, knowing that they would only continue the battle if a new commander assumed Mandalore, the ultimate's position, and many of the warriors turned into bounty hunters or mercenaries. Revan completed a new assassin droid called HK-47 shortly after the Battle of Malachor V, based on the HK-24 class assassin bot by the Zerka Corporation. Revan intended to utilize the HK-47 to eliminate specific opponents in order to avoid repeating the carnage that happened at Malachor. HK-47 began to feel that Revan's conduct during the Mandalorian Wars, notably at Malachor, had a hidden motive. The droid thought that the devastation was designed to break the Jedi and keep them faithful to Revan alone. Mitra Surik was left without a link to the Force after Malachor, so she chose to respond to the Jedi Council requests that Malak, Revan, and Surik account for their crimes. On the other hand, Revan and Malik refused and led the remainder of their soldiers to the unknown regions, stating that they were following the surviving Mandalorian. Malik pleaded with Revan to assassinate Shurik, but Revan declined, declaring that the Jedi was already dead. Revan brought Malik alone to Rekiad 
after which they traced Mandalore's instructions to the Twin Spears, two ice formations. They uncovered the grave of Sith Lord Dramath II, as well as a Datacron beneath his sarcophagus, which validated Mandalore's story. The Datacron mentioned a planet called Nathema, and the two Jedi resolved to go there to find the Sith who had twisted Mandalore. Before leaving, Revan hid Mandalore's mask in Dramath's coffin to prevent the Mandalorians from seeing it again. Revan and Malak proceeded to Nathema, a world in the faraway Corleon sector, and were astounded to find the planet utterly devoid of the Force. There, the two Jedi learned of the Sith Lord Vitiate, who lived roughly a thousand years ago during the Great Hyperspace War among the Sith Empire and the Republic. In 4999 BBY, Vitiate persuaded many of the surviving Sith to join him in a Sith magic ritual. But the ritual of Nathema resulted in the total destruction of all life on Nathema's surface and Vitiate's immortality, who took on the name Sith Emperor and collected the new generations of Sith before leaving the shattered Sith Empire. Revan and Malak traced the Sith survivors route to the storm-covered planet of Dromund Kars, where they found the capital of a recreated Sith Empire ruled by the Sith Emperor. Presenting themselves as mercenaries, the duo spent months researching everything they could find about the Empire and its leader, and they quickly learned of the Emperor's plans to invade the Republic. Instead of informing the Republic, the two Jedi, proud and overconfident, thought they could fight the Emperor on their own, and sought a method to penetrate the Imperial Citadel inside the Empire city center of Kars, in order to confront the Sith monarch. Yari, a representative of the Imperial Guard who safeguarded the Emperor, assisted the duo. But the Jedi were unknowing that all Guardsmen were tied to the Emperor's wishes and that he was luring them into a trap. When Revan and Malik showed up at the Emperor's council chamber, the Sith leader was ready for them. Rather than trying to fight them, the Emperor managed to reach out and control their minds, warping the pair into eager servants and accomplishing their descent to the darkness before sifting through their psyches for helpful information. The Emperor anointed his new minions as Darth Malak and Darth Revan, the Dark Lords of the Sith. He dispatched them back to the Republic as a vanguard to his own invasion, instructing them to discover and utilize the Rakatan Star Forge and to report back after they had defeated the Republic's defenses. The Emperor publicly declared that Malak and Revan were Republic spies, presenting photographs of the two and stating that they had been murdered in the recesses of the Citadel. However, Revan and Malak's resolve was stronger than he had imagined and they soon broke free from his influence. They discovered the Star Forge and utilized it to build a large army of warships to attack the Galactic Republic. They intended to conquer the galaxy in order to unite it in preparation for Vitiate's army. Revan and Malak emerged in the galaxy around 3958 BBY with a new fleet and legions of fallen Jedi following them, plunging the cosmos into the Jedi Civil War. Due to Revan's experience with the enemy's tactics, as well as the fact that many planets willingly joined his cause, as a result of his efforts in the Mandalorian Wars, the Galactic Republic and the Jedi were instantly put on the defensive and lost battle after battle. On Korriban, Revan built a Sith Academy to train potential recruits, therefore strengthening his army. Revan also engineered the killing of other prominent politicians, like the Usanis of Achani, and replaced them with his own men. He also established a lethal Sith assassin order that would kidnap and corrupt Jedi blindly to the darker half of the Force. Darth Malak, on the other hand, quickly developed his own aspirations. He saw Revan as a weak and unworthy leader of the Sith Empire. Tensions promptly erupted into a lightsaber combat in which Revan severed Malak's face, compelling him to sport an artificial metal jaw. The Jedi Council Council shortly after enticed Malak and Revan into a trap, understanding that if they did not act fast, all chances of rehabilitation would be gone. In an attempt to arrest Revan, a Jedi attack squad, along with Bastila Shan, entered his capital ship. Malak fired on Revan's vessel, nearly killing him and taking advantage of Revan's temporary preoccupation. The lone Jedi survivor, Bastila Shan, treated Revan's wounds and took him back to the Jedi Council for his judgment. Darth Malak crowned himself the uncontested Dark Lord of the Sith when Revan was presumed dead. You don't know what you're talking about. Knights of the Old Republic. Following Darth Revan's capture and return to the Jedi Council, the united power of the Masters utilized the Force to wipe the fallen Dark Lord's memory. They thought Revan was the only individual powerful enough to defeat Darth Malak as well as the Sith, so they intended to resurrect him as a weapon against them. They trained him as a Jedi Knight, subjecting him to tests on the secret world of Dantooine. 
After fully completing the tests, the Jedi Council dispatched Bastila Shan and Revan to locate the Star Forge using star maps scattered around the galaxy. The whereabouts of the Star Forge will be divulged to them after all of the maps were discovered. Revan was utterly oblivious to the Jedi's plot, not aware he was a former Sith Lord. Revan and Bastila Shan quickly gathered a crew as they journeyed throughout Kashyyyk, Manan, and Tatooine in search of the star maps, assisting and executing many people along the way. Their achievements, however, did not go unnoticed and they were shortly apprehended by Saul, Karath, and Darth Malak. Darth Malak disclosed to Revan, to the Jedi's amazement, that he was originally Darth Revan in a climactic confrontation. Darth Malak and Revan clashed, resulting in the Sith capturing Bastila Shan. Darth Malak was particularly interested in Bastila Shan since she had perfected the uncommon technique of battle mediation, which permitted her to harness the Force to augment the power and talents of old. Darth Malak swiftly enticed Bastila Shan into becoming his apprentice using the might of the Force. Nevertheless, Revan and his team continued on their quest. They entered the Sith Academy at Koriban and destroyed all opponents there, thereby driving the Sith from the planet for generations. Revan went to the Star Forge with the last star map discovered on Koriban. He was initially confronted by Bastila Shan, who proclaimed her newfound devotion to the Sith Empire. Revan redeemed her and the two professed their love for each other. Revan then confronted Darth Malak in the space station center. Revan's old friend was defeated after an epic struggle between the good and the dark. Darth Malak expressed sorrow for what he had done in his dying words. Soon after, the Galactic Republic's last fleet destroyed the Star Forge, effectively eliminating the dreadful Sith menace. I don't know if I'm ready. You have to be. We have to. Into the unknown regions. Years later, Revan dwelt in Coruscant with his wife, Bastila Shan. Revan had formerly been the Dark Lord of the Sith, but he was now a redeemed Jedi Master known as the Prodigal Knight. Despite the fact that he had made amends by demolishing the Sith Empire he had built, the Jedi Council still dreaded and detested him. Revan, on the other hand, had his own problems. He began to get images of a mystery planet wrapped in dark and lightning since only some of his knowledge had fully returned. Believing that the destiny of the galaxy was in jeopardy, Revan set out with his comrade named Candorus Ordo, a Mandalorian who fought beside him against Darth Malak to discover the truth about this forgotten world. He abandoned Bastila Shan, who was now expecting his sole son, assuming he would not return. Revan's voyage eventually brought him to Rekiad, wherein he presented the Mandalore, the ultimate mask, to Candorus Ordo. He instructed Candorus Ordo to restore the Mandalorians that he had formerly slain since more warriors could be needed in the upcoming Great Battle. Candorus Ordo would later become Mandalore the Preserver, reuniting the clans. Revan then traveled to the planet Nathema, retracing his lost steps. The planet was devoid of the Force owing to a Sith ritual performed years before by the Sith Emperor Vitiate that gave him immortality. Men of Vitiate Sith Empire ambushed Revan's ship. Revan escaped the crash landing but was apprehended. For years, Revan was imprisoned on Dromund Kars, the dark land he had glimpsed in his dreams. Another Sith Empire waited beyond known space, unnoticed by the Galactic Republic as well as other Jedi, with thousands of Sith poised for battle. Revan became close to his abductor, the Sith Lord Scourge, and finally convinced him to join him in his struggle against Vitiate, the Sith Emperor. Mitra Surik, Revan's ex-general in the Mandalorian Wars arrived on the planet and rescued him. Mitra Sorik, known widely as the Jedi Exile, had been on her own quest for the past ten years. She had reconnected to the Force after losing her connection at the devastation of Malachor V, and she had crushed a breakaway party of Sith commanded by Revan's old master, Trier, who had risen from the remains of Revan's Sith Empire. Revan and Mitra Sorik developed a scheme to murder the Sith Emperor with the assistance of Scourge. Scourge listened to him because he believed that a battle with the Galactic Republic, as Vitiate intended, would culminate in the extinction of the Sith Empire. The three met the Sith Emperor in his council chamber, much as Revan and Malak had done a decade before. Revan fought the evil master valiantly, but was eventually defeated. He healed his injuries with the help of his allies and rose up, ready to battle again. Scourge had a vision at that time that indicated the trio would not win their struggle, but rather another Jedi in the distant future would. Scourge abandoned the two in order to preserve his own life by murdering Mitra Surik, permitting Vitiate to recapture Revan once again. What will you do? Mercy. I don't know the meaning of the word. Fall into darkness. Revan was confined in a coma 300 years after Sith Alchemy extended his life. 
the Sith Emperor attacked his mind with the Force, seeking knowledge and power. Revan, however, withstood his efforts with the help of Mitra Surik's energy. Revan also utilized his special relationship with Vishia to persuade him to delay the battle he had been planning for ages. When the time came for the Great Galactic War, Revan convinced the Sith Emperor to accept the conditions of the Treaty of Coruscant, which actually gave the Galactic Republic half of the galaxy. When tensions began to rise once again, an allied strike group rescued Revan, believing he might assist the war effort. During his confinement, however, Revan's thoughts were overtaken by anger for his abductor and he plotted vengeance. Revan traveled to a space station, identical to the Star Forge he had wrecked so many years before, called the Foundry. He intended to use the Foundry to create a fleet of war droids capable of eliminating trillions of creatures with Sith genetic makeup, considering them all to be monstrosities. Of course, his tormentor Vitiate would be among the dead. His plot was foiled when another attack group of the Sith Empire's best soldiers encountered and murdered Revan. Yet, Revan's willpower was so great that his consciousness split in two when he died. While his light half welcomed in the Force, his darker side, driven by vengeance against Vitiate, transcended death and regenerated his own body. The evil Revan pledged that he would never die till the Sith Emperor was expelled from the galaxy for good. I will waste no more time. This must end now! The Shadow of Revan because of Revan's achievements, a cult dubbed as the Order of Revan was created in his honor. Behind the shadows, the resurrected Revan grew the cult into a galactic force with thousands of adherents. Revan emerged as the group's head again a few years later. He thought that all distractions should be removed in order for the galaxy and himself to focus entirely on defeating the Sith Emperor. Revan and his supporters attempted to build a legion of cyborgs from the remnants of the Star Forge. However, their efforts were halted by a unified task force. They then intended to draw the Galactic Republic Republic and Sith Empire forces above Rishi so that they might kill each other and enable Revan to pick out the survivors, effectively making his army the only power in the galaxy. They were halted once more. Revan's insane crusade proceeded unrelentingly. The Sith Emperor had been killed three years before by a Jedi dubbed the Hero of Tython, but his spirit survived. Revan intended to raise Vitiate's ghost on Yavin 4 in order to finally destroy him. The Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire agreed to a brief ceasefire in order to put a halt to Revan's plot before it was too late, fearing that his interference would only culminate in Vitiate's comeback to the galaxy and, therefore, inevitable doom for everyone. Even the Sith detested Vitiate, believing that the former Lord desired nothing else but to destroy the universe in his quest for everlasting domination. The combined groups attacked and destroyed Revan, led by the hero of Tython, the new Sith Empire ruler Darth Maar, and Satel Shan, the Jedi Grand Master. Despite all the destruction caused by Revan's struggle, the Sith Emperor returned stronger than ever. The light side soul of Revan, who was slain on the Foundry years earlier, arrived before the half of himself that resisted death in the spectacle. The human Revan felt he had botched his mission. However, the soul of Revan observed that they were fractured and could not continue until they were repaired. Seeing how low he had sunk and how much his quest for vengeance had cost him, the dark Revan's rage lessened and he ultimately agreed to bond back with his lighter self, having found peace in the Force. I was a dark lord of the Sith. I was the prodigal knight. I was powerful, but I was also weak. Not anymore. What was Darth Revan's life like after the events of the game? The Old Republic Revan is the third novel in the Star Wars The Old Republic series, and it focuses on the character Revan. On September 25th, 2012, the paperback was released. Drew Karpishin's book was published in 2011 on November 15th. Darth Plagueis is also teased through a preview in the novel. Mark Thompson provides the narration for the book's audio edition. The book basically covers a few of the most important arcs in Darth Revan's life, starting with his journey into the Unknown Lands. The story opens two years after the conclusion of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, with Revan residing on Coruscant, now wedded to Bastilla Shan, on terrible terms with the Jedi Order, and suffering from nightmares he believes are from his buried past as the Sith Lord Darth Revan. Desperate for information about his past, he attempts to contact a former Mandalorian War subordinate called Mitra Surik, who is a pivotal character in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic II, the Sith Lords and discovers that she has been removed from the Jedi Order and has left Republic space. An accidental connection with his old buddy Candorous Ordo gives Revan another chance to restore his memories. A party of Mandalorians is looking for the Mask of Mandalore, 
the ancient ruler of the Mandalorian citizens. After conquering Mandalore, Revan took the mask and stored it away to stop the Mandalorians from reforming and to break their morale. Before departing, because he knows that Bastilla is expecting a child, and despite her protestations, Revan persuades her to stay because he isn't sure how long he'll be gone. The Sith Empire has re-established itself on the planet Dromund Kaas, unbeknownst to the Republic, after being chased away by the Republic thousands of years ago. Scourge, a Sith warrior, becomes embroiled in a dispute amongst persons of the Sith's Dark Council and is finally hired by Darth Nyrus to find traitors and dangers to her safety. Scourge goes about his business, despite mounting suspicions that Nyrus is plotting to assassinate him. After gaining Nyrus's confidence, the Sith Master tells Scourge about her plot to depose the Emperor, because she feels he's crazy and would drive the Sith Empire to the brink of disaster. She transports Scourge to the Emperor's home planet of Nathema, which is void of the Force. Nyrus says that a Sith Lord seduced a farmer's wife, which gave rise to the Emperor a thousand years ago. As he was then known, Lord Vitiate finally assassinated his family once the truth about his origins was discovered and eventually pushed out the governing Sith Lord through violence and fear. Lord Vitiate gathered up the fragments and held the Sith Empire together after the Empire's humiliating defeat in their fight against the Republic. In order to achieve immortality, he and the other Sith carried out a ceremony that slaughtered all living things in the world, including the other Sith, and channeled their life essence to Vichia. Nyrus is concerned that the Emperor intends to invade the Republic, jeopardizing the Empire's stability as well as the safety of the last Sith species who have been cruelly hunted and killed by the Jedi. Revan learns about Nathema after recovering Mandalore's mask from a recording he left behind, which said that Mandalore the Ultimate was contacted by Sith to destroy the Republic. Revan's ship, the Ebon Hawk, is shot down upon arrival at Nathema, and he's taken by Nyrus and Scourge. T3M4, Revan's bot, finally repairs the spacecraft and returns it to Republic space. The story then skips forward four years to the occurrences of the Dark Wars. Mitra Surik comes to Bastila Shan's residence, accompanied by by T3M4 to give Bastila a tape T3 took of Revan being seized by Sith. Although she is envious of Mitra and Revan's connection, she's happy to learn that Mitra is determined to retrace Revan's steps and locate him. After looking through a municipal facility, she lands in Nathema and discovers Dromund Kaas. She then heads out for the planet. When she arrives at Dromund Kaas, she poses as a mercenary. After meeting Nathema and speaking with Revan, she ultimately contacts Scourge, who agrees that the Emperor is a threat to the Sith and needs to be stopped. After learning that Nyrus is a rogue, the Emperor vows to eliminate literally the entire Dark Council and deploys his own army against them. Scourge and Mitra attempt to release Revan from his jail during the mayhem. Mitra hands Revan the mask he wore in the Mandalorian Wars. When Revan wears the mask, all of his memories come back to him. After the Mandalorian Wars, Revan and his companion Malak went in pursuit of the Sith Empire, but because of their corrupt practices during the war, they were made vulnerable to the Emperor's will and converted to the Dark Side, before being sent back to destabilize the Republic so the Sith Empire could come back and take over. Nyrus attacks Mitra and Scourge, but before she's able to kill them, Revan approaches and easily defeats the Sith Lord by channeling her Force Lightning Blast back to her. The three went out to destroy the Emperor after recuperating and viewing a transmission from his son Vayner and Bastila. On the other hand, Scourge is plagued by images of the Emperor and a Jedi Knight that he cannot explain. The three battle their way to the Emperor's main room, where Revan fights him. The Emperor has terrifying power. He almost electrocutes Revan to death, and is only interrupted when T3 sets him alight with its flamethrower. T3 is destroyed when the Emperor aims his lightning toward it. Mitra and Scourge interrupt at this point. At this point, Scourge recognizes his prophecy. He's witnessing the Emperor's execution caused due to a Jedi Knight. However, it is neither Mitra nor Revan. Scourge realizes what must be done and injures Mitra in her back, slaying her instantly. Scourge then lies to the Emperor, claiming that this was all a plot to trap every rebel in the Empire, and Revan is put in a suspension tank, where the Emperor continuously interrogates and tortures him for details about the Republic. Unknown to the Emperor, Revan has the ability to somewhat force his will on the Emperor and aims to delay his full-scale attack on the Republic for as long as possible, so that Bastila and his son would never witness war. Scourge proceeds the Emperor's present of eternal life. The novel finishes with an old Bastila chatting with her son many decades later. They discuss Revan, and Vayner questions if his dad would have been unhappy that he did not join the Jedi Order, but instead went into politics. Bastila tells him that what he did was the right thing, and that even though she does not know what happened to Revan, she knows he succeeded since they're still alive. And the evil that Revan dreaded never materialized. Bastila then falls asleep 
thinking about her missing husband. I spent 300 years in lockstep with the Emperor's mind. I know what he's become, what he wants. The Emperor must be destroyed completely or he will return and consume every last living thing. What was Darth Revan like? Revan was a male human with a pale complexion and brown eyes who kept his deep brown hair shoulder length for the most of his life. Revan acquired a beard while searching for the Star Forge, but when he shaved it soon after the Battle of Rakata Prime, he had been able to slip unnoticed past the crowds on Coruscant. Already as a young student, Revan was recognized for his great brilliance, charm, and insatiable need for knowledge. Even as a Jedi Knight, Revan was known for his strategic skills and decisive leadership. His dedication and charisma won him an audience of like-minded Jedi, but it was his power and leadership that drove the others to embrace him as their unquestioned leader. Revan was enraged in his youth by the Jedi Council's apathy and failure to take action against the Mandalorians, but his passion for preserving the Republic drove him to advocate vehemently for his cause. However, one of his most powerful abilities as the Dark Lord was his capacity to manipulate others. The blend of his captivating personality and the attraction of the Dark Side proved to be sufficient to persuade legions of Jedi and innumerable Republic troops to abandon their previous allegiances and join Revan's cause. His first disciple and best companion, Darth Malak, previously the Jedi Alec, who formerly held a profound attachment for the Jedi and the Republic, was the most extraordinary proof of his talent in persuasion. Revan transformed Malak previously distinguished Jedi Knight who zealously supported the morals of the Jedi Order to a barbaric Sith Lord with a thirst for blood and extreme violence and devastation while teaching him. Even while absorbed in the dark side, Revan appears to have had a sense of humor. He was delighted enough by HK-47's description of Malik as a meat bag, as well as Malik's outraged reaction to reconfigure the assassin bot to reference all organic life as meat bags. HK-47's repeated usage of the word in reference to Malik made dark Lord's Apprentice insane, much to Revan's delight. Even with his programmed attitude, Revan was amused by the idea of Malik being the first meatbag. As a consequence of the Jedi's tampering, the new Revan was very loyal to the Jedi Order and the Galactic Republic, always respecting its values and committed to permanently eradicating the Sith menace. Kreia, on the other hand, did not think that the Jedi had altered Revan as they subsequently claimed. She felt the Jedi simply reversed the effects of battle in the dark side on Revan, enabling his real personality to surface from the recesses of his mind, a person eager to go to great lengths to protect others. This empire failed because of you. Someone like me. His appearances in other media including why he didn't appear in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Darth Revan, the runner-up in the Toy Fair magazine's Fans' Choice figure poll, was released in the third quarter of 2007 as part of the 30th anniversary collection Expanded Universe Wave 5. To commemorate May the 4th, 2014, a special LEGO model of Darth Revan was produced as a limited edition piece, with orders of $75 or more on Star Wars LEGO items. In the run-up to the July 2015 San Diego Comic Con, Hasbro Inc. held a fan vote to choose which figure would be the next addition to the Star Wars The Black Series range of 6-inch action figures. Darth Revan was named as the victor of the vote on July the 10th at Comic-Con, and he'll be the next Black Series figurine. Revan was slated to be featured in Ghosts of Mortis, which was an episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars third season in 2011. He was supposed to appear as a Sith Lord with Darth Bane as the Sun's mentor, but they were removed from the show in late production. Dave Filoni the show's director was reluctant to utilize the clip, and it was removed at George Lucas's request since it contradicted Lucas's opinions of the Force. The clip advanced to the animatic stage and was included as additional content on the Blu-ray release of Star Wars The Clone Wars, the complete season 3. The action takes place in the well of the evil side in the world of Mortis, where the strong force user known as the Sun faces dark side entities concerning his sibling, the daughter, who died at his hands. When the Sun probes their identities, gigantic figures of Darth Revan and Darth Bane come to him, stating their determination to establish the dark side's supremacy. Talking about the presence of someone who will rule the cosmos, Revan and Bane caution the Sun that power over the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker, is critical to the Sun's success. According to the visual lexicon aid for the 2019 movie Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, one of the Sith's eternal armies is named after Darth Revan. In the book Shadow of the Sith, Sith Zealots chant Revan's name. Four. I've fought Mandalores and armies of the Dark Side. You won't stop me. What makes Darth Revan so powerful? 
Revan was a superb fighter, especially with a lightsaber. With his lightsaber, he was proficient at deflecting and diverting enemy fire, and his powers were enhanced by his power of precognitive abilities. He frequently used acrobatic moves in combat, using his body's innate force talents to boost his efficiency. Among Revan's most notable triumphs was his one-on-one -on -one victory against Mandalore the Ultimate, the head of the Mandalorian Warrior Society and a formidable fighter in his own right. Revan defeated a pair of giant Tarantatex on Korriban, and he defeated scores of Dark Jedi and Sith in the Jedi Civil War, including his own former student Darth Malak. Revan was also skilled with weapons when he generally used a lightsaber. Having used blaster weaponry as a Republic warrior and while battling in the Taurus dueling ring, he also maintained similar abilities later in life, using a blaster when posing on Rakayad as Avna. Even as a novice Jedi Knight, Revan possessed extraordinary force abilities. His power rose as he studied the evil side of the Force when he became a Sith Lord, and following his Force conversion, the man rapidly retrained himself in the techniques of the side of good at a rate faster than that of a regular Padawan. Revan was able to harness both the dark and light sides of the Force simultaneously at the height of his abilities after regaining his lost memories, allowing him to release the Force in its most actual form by exposing himself to both ends of the Force combat. Revan could enhance his innate physical skills by tapping into the Force, enhancing his strength and speed and enabling him to make acrobatic moves unimaginable for average humans. Humans. Revan's prowess as a combat commander gained him the eternal esteem of both the Mandalorian and Achani warrior societies. The Mandalorians considered him as an extremely worthy foe, one who both represented and exposed their ideologies. Revan was a brilliant strategist and planner, and some thought he was personally accountable for the Republic's victories during the Mandalorian Wars. The Akani, on the other hand, felt that Revan represented the pinnacle of what could be accomplished in the arts of combat, and that his prowess was the result of highly advanced battle foresight. Revan could speak and understand languages other than his own basic, including binary, Hotes, Mandoa, Shiriwuk, and the languages of the Selkath and the ancient Sith. Revan also literally ripped the Rakatan language from the Black Rakata's minds, allowing him to understand their speech. As a young Padawan, Revan showed a natural knack and interest in mechanics and droids. Revan, a talented pilot, could use the Force to help his spatial awareness, and after defeating experienced racer Red Ross on Taris, he showed excellent at racing swoop motorcycles. Revan's affinity for droids perplexed his teacher, Kraya, who grew to assume it was due to Revan's need for subordinates who obeyed commands with her question. Following the Mandalorian Wars, Revan built the sophisticated assassination droid HK-47 on his own, and even after losing his recollections, he was able to fix the droid and regain HK-47's access to the majority of his memories and battle procedures. Conclusion While Revan's latter years were chaotic, he was hailed as one of the most influential, renowned, and powerful people in history by both Sith and Jedi. Revan's victory over the Mandalorians was felt hundreds of years later when they were still ghosts of their former selves. Similarly, the Rakata remained with Revan along with the strong Akani soldiers. His command and direction of the Galactic Republic Army transformed it into a respectable combat force capable of dealing with dangers like Vitiate Sith Empire. Based on a corrupted text concerning Revan, a Sith titled himself Darth Revan hundreds of years after his death. Furthermore, Revan's Sith ideology and teachings were subsequently embraced by the notorious Darth Bane, who utilized his dark ways to crush the Brotherhood of Darkness and restructure the Sith into the rule of two, leading to Palpatine's ascent. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Let them come. It's their funeral.